We've seen Mueller use people's kids to get to folks in the past. He could do this with Don Trump Jr. Trump Jr. went into the Senate Intelligence Committee, took an oath to tell the truth and lied his butt off. You think he'll get indicted? If that's what Roger Stone and Michael Cohen get indicted for, yeah. lying to the Senate Intelligence Committee, if Trump Jr. lied, then he gets indicted too. That's former federal prosecutor saying that Donald Trump Jr. ought to get ready for an indictment for lying to Congress. Now, he's talking about when Don Jr. was hauled up to Capitol Hill to answer questions about the now infamous Trump Tower meeting with the Russians. The story about that meeting, it just kept changing. First, Donnie said it was about Russian adoptions. Then, after emails showed Trump Jr. was promised dirt on Hillary Clinton, he admitted it was about the campaign. But... Trump Jr. still maintained he never discussed the meeting with his dad. And that brings us to good old dad's role in this whole thing. And that story also kept changing. First, Don Jr. released a statement saying it was a short introductory meeting about adoptions. About a week later, Trump attorney Jay Sekulow said the president had nothing to do with that statement. Two weeks after that, Washington Post broke news that Tr Donald Trump personally dictated the statement and then a day later, with the White House in full damage control mode, Press Secretary Sarah Sanders said Trump had nothing to do with it. Fast forward to a year later, the president's attorneys, they write a memo to Bob Mueller saying Donald Trump did in fact dictate a, quote, short but accurate statement about the whole thing. Now we get to present day where investigators have been combing through records all in an attempt to prove that Don Jr. spoke to his father about the meeting there were two mysterious phone calls that everyone was focused on. Neither one, it turns out, was directed to father's son. But Congressman Adam Schiff, who's head of the House Intelligence Committee, says that doesn't necessarily prove anything. So those conversations could have taken place over the phone or they could have taken place by Don Jr. walking down the hall to talk to dad. We're going to get to the bottom of this. Why all the lies? Why the cover up? Uh, what more was uh, going on here? Uh, and I think a key part of that is to find out what the president's role was in all of this. And joining us now, former federal prosecutor Roland Riappel. And Roland, let's start off, um, you know, with father and son here. As mentioned before, hey, if Stone... And Manafort got in trouble for, uh, or Cohen, I should say, for lying to the feds. There seems to be a pattern even I can pick up on. Uh, one would say that Donald Trump Jr., he could be next, right? Yes, I, I think that uh, Paul Butler's comment is correct. If uh, the congressional investigators feel the evidence shows that uh, they were lied to by Don Jr., there's no reason to think that Mr. Mueller wouldn't follow that up and charge Don Jr., just as he has charged others who have lied to Congress. Now, that poses obvious problems uh, for the president. If that happens, um, follow the steps here of the dominoes. Uh, what are some of the potential consequences? People obviously say, hey, if he's been floating pardons for other people, he certainly would do it for blood. Yeah, and I, I think that there are a number of ways in which an indictment of Donald Jr. is very damaging to President Trump politically. First of all, everyone knows that Mr. Trump has really been so close to his son and has, uh, you know, been so close to his son's statements that it's going to be hard for Mr. Trump to make the claim that Don Jr. was acting on his own when he made any statement that is provably false. Indeed, Mr. Trump <laughs> drafted some statements that seem to be uh, pretty dubious on that airplane. Um, secondly, if Don Jr. is indicted, then Mr. Trump is left with a very difficult choice of letting Jr. hang out to dry the way he has with uh, Michael Cohn and others, or pardoning Jr it's hard to see how either is good for Trump politically. If you pardon Jr., that looks bad. If you let him get convicted, that looks bad or worse. There's just no good political outcome here for Mr. Trump if Jr. is indicted. There's been even more revelations um, into Roger Stone, uh, certainly some of his dealings going back uh, earlier. And when you look at the man's work, uh, he certainly is a colorful character, and that's about as polite as I can put it. That all said, Roland, did you see anything in there that just confirmed that this is a scummy guy or that 
there could be some exposure also with some of the recent um, news that's come out with some of the clients and some of the dealings with Stone going back a few years vis-a-vis -vis the president. Yeah, I, I think that um, the indictment of Roger Stone is a very significant step because he clearly is someone who is so closely connected to the Russians and the Russian tampering in the election. Um, that's a real problem for Mr. Trump because at a minimum, the, the Russians... Uh, effective donation to the Trump campaign of these Hillary Clinton hacked emails uh, by Guccifer 2.0 and WikiLeaks acting as the Russians beard all of which was negotiated of course by Mr. Stone at a minimum that's a campaign finance violation that's pretty darn serious and uh, it could be much worse than that this connection which we now see was uh, basically a conspiracy between Roger Stone and the Russians uh, is a very damaging thing to Mr. Trump. And the only question now is who else was in on that conspiracy with Roger Stone? We'll have to wait and see what the, what the proof shows. But my guess is we have not seen the last of this. Later on this week, uh, Roland, Mr. Barr, who is um, the nominee for attorney general, is going to go before the Senate Judiciary Committee. Let me put you on that committee. Uh, we've obviously gone through the first round of questions where I think most people say Mr. Barr acquitted himself quite well. But there seems to be a nagging concern that that was a performance and that 17-page memo that he wrote before to the president may really be where he is. What kind of questions do you want more transparency on uh, before, in fact, you as a senator would vote? Well, I, you know, I would really delve very deeply into Mr. Barr's meeting with Mr. Trump before his nomination. I'd like to know what Mr. Trump asked him about that 17-page memo. I'd like to know if Mr. Trump tried to extract a loyalty oath from Mr. Barr the way he did with Jim Comey. I'd like to know uh, if uh, Mr. Trump played out various hypotheticals with Mr. Barr as to what he would do if, you know, one thing or another is true to try to get a sense of whether Mr. Barr was going to be protecting Mr. Trump. I'd love to know if Mr. Trump asked Mr. Barr if he would keep the report that Mueller, Mr. Mueller ultimately gives him uh, confidential and not release it to the press if he can. All, all those types of questions I think are well worth asking Mr. Barr because uh, I'm pretty certain that Mr. Barr, who is a very serious institutionalist and will want to protect the Justice Department, I'm pretty certain he'll give answers that indicate that he'll be independent of Mr. Trump, and then Congress will have to hold him to those answers uh, when the report is finally issued. Um, but I think those are good questions to ask, and they're the ones I would be asking. And finally, I want you um, to take a listen. This was yesterday on Face the Nation. Uh, the president, as is custom, uh, does an interview the day of the Super Bowl with, uh, to the network that's carrying the game. And in it, um, the reporter was questioning the president on if he would make the Mueller report when it's finally issued public. Let's take a listen to the exchange. Would you make the Mueller report public because you say there's nothing in there? It's totally Congress up can to the attorney general. It anyway, though. Totally up to the but attorney general. what do you want general. them to do? Even the Mueller report said it had nothing to do with the campaign. Uh, when you look at some of the people and the events, it had nothing to do... You wouldn't have a problem if Excuse it became me. public. Excuse me. No, it's up to the attorney general. I don't know. It depends. I have no idea what it's going to say. Okay, so to that end, um, if you're Mueller... Do you wait until Barr's confirmed um, and then you go ahead and you release the report because you don't want Whitaker being the guy to decide what uh, does or doesn't get out there? Are you, if you're Mueller, unconcerned who it is because Democrats have subpoena power and if they're going to try and quash the report, you're just going to go up to Capitol Hill and say on live uh, TV uh, what is in the contents of the report. You're Mueller now, Roland. How do you navigate some of the moving deck chairs here? Well, if I was Mueller, and of course, that's a big ask. He's not only taller, smarter, probably better looking than me, but if I was Mueller, uh, I would wait for Barr to be appointed. And the reason I would do so is that Barr, uh, 
although he is a deeply conservative person and although he believes very strongly in the unitary executive and executive power and privilege and all that sort of thing, despite all that, he's a very much an institutionalist and he will want to protect the reputation of the Department of Justice. And that means, I think, that he is much less likely to do something kooky just to, just to protect the president. Um, so if I am Mueller, I wait until Barr is confirmed, because I do think that's going to happen in the next week or so. And then uh, if the report is ready and Mueller is ready to issue it and take whatever last actions he intends to take at the end of his investigation, then I would move ahead. But I would wait for Barr to be appointed. I think that's the savvy thing for Mr. Mueller to do. And you believe no matter what, no matter who the AG is, one way or another, we the people are going to finally see the contents of the report. Because I, I am with a healthy amount of cynicism with a lot of folks here to say if the president can help it, he will do everything in his power to keep this thing under wraps. Oh, I, you know, I, I'm sure that's what the president wants. But a, as a practical matter, Richard, I think the, the substance of the report and its findings is bound to get out. Um, Congress can subpoena things from, from the Department of Justice. They can, f they can force Mueller to testify. They can force Barr to testify. It, you know, the substance of this is going to get out. There will be parts of it, I suspect, that are uh, classified and based on classified material. And they, like some of the court filings we've seen over the last few months, uh, may be blocked out of any public disclosure of the report because you know, the public is not entitled to and should not have classified information. But an awful lot of the report will not be classified. And I just don't see how Mr. Barr or anybody else could keep it suppressed. It, it, it's bound to get out in its substance, I believe. Well, Roland, I, I don't think there's a better federal-looking prosecutor than yourself here. I don't care what you say, Mueller or anyone else notwithstanding. Hey, I appreciate it, pal. Thank you so much. I'm sure we'll have a few more headlines as the week goes on. Thank you. Okay. Good to be with you, Richard. All right, everybody. When we come back, we're going to head over to the federal courthouse in Brooklyn for the very latest. That is, the jury has begun deliberations on the El Chapo case. Our own Dominic Carter on the scene. He'll join us next.